Hey everyone, Steve here and in this video I'll be taking a look at the Hori Compact Joystick for the original PlayStation. Now as you can see here, this is a pretty small arcade stick that features an 8 button layout and micro switched joystick that has an original PlayStation slash PlayStation 2 plug on it with a nice Hori logo. So given that this is for the original PlayStation slash PS2, there is no home button and we also don't have any L3 or R3 buttons and it doesn't even have a turbo or slow motion feature which was common with a lot of arcade sticks back in the day. You can see here the one that I've got has a nice translucent blue case. X, circle, square and triangle have their respective color buttons and you've got gray for everything else and there's a black ball top. On the underside of the stick you can see that there is a nice heavy metal plate which adds quite a bit of weight to the stick. You've got rubber feet and your five screws that will be holding the case together, which I will be looking at. And of course, after testing this out, I will do a little teardown and we'll see what's inside this thing. The sticker itself just lets you know that it's the Hori Company Limited Compact Joystick. So this is essentially the historic predecessor to the modern Hori Fighting Stick Minis that exist for the Nintendo Switch and PS4, I think. Not sure if there's an Xbox version, but it is a very compact form factor and you can see the buttons here aren't standard arcade buttons. Doing a little button click test. They don't sound micro switched at all and they feel a little membrane-y but they don't actually have too much of a stop at the end of the buttons and they're a little springy so maybe they do have a small switch in them. These definitely feel like normal membrane buttons for select and start and then you do have a nice clicky joystick for directional inputs. So while I could obviously test this out on a PlayStation 1 or 2, it's probably easier just to test this out on my computer using an adapter. Okay, so everything on this particular controller seems to be working fine. It is being seen as an analog stick, which is pretty funny. So there we are. Okay, I haven't played with this before for any extended period of time, but just looking at it, basically it is the, wi the width of the joystick is the length of my hand, if that's not at all confusing. And I'm basically going to be playing it just with my four fingers like that. Easy access to all the buttons, which isn't too bad at all actually. Okay, so I've loaded up Guilty Gear X2 Reload just for fun and let's play some arcade mode. I'm feeling a little chippy today. Oops. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I changed the buttons to what I thought would work, but I feel tempted to press these two, so I'm going to change them again. So my first impressions with this controller is that the buttons actually feel fine. It doesn't feel weird at all that they're either too small or not your kind of standard arcade feeling buttons. The uh, placement is also pretty interesting. It's easy to get used to. and It doesn't feel like you're straining too hard or you don't have enough room to move. I am bracing the side of the arcade stick with my pinky as you can see here on my left side. Actually both sides actually I'm doing that so I'm kind of playing it as if there's just a controller in front of me and I'm just laying it down on the table which is an interesting natural thing I did. I don't know I'm not really thinking about it too much so it seems pretty natural and it is a nice compact form factor. It doesn't seem to be moving around at all although if I do press back you might lift up off the table a little bit but that's if I'm very heavy handed. I don't know if you'd be able to play with this on your lap because, you know, it's so small that it's probably just the width of just one of your legs. But, you know, it's a nice quality feeling product and it kind of lives up to the Hori reputation or helped probably even set the Hori reputation given how old it is. Okay, I died because I was trying to do my instant kill. So let me try that again. I don't know why it wasn't working. It's probably me, not the controller. There we are, finally. <laughs> I got it in training mode. I don't know, maybe the uh, the throw of these switches is a bit too small or something. I've just been doing it for like five minutes straight. Admittedly, I'm not too familiar with Guilty Gear and like the movesets and the inputs and everything, although it should be the same. So I guess I'm just going to have to go back to Street Fighter for one last time to kind of see whether or not this can be a viable long-term option for me.
Okay, so on second thought, I actually don't want to give up on trying to use this with a few other games. So I'm going to swap my USB adapter into this Brook PS2 to Xbox One adapter, but you can plug it into your PC and it works as well. So I'm just going to try that now. Okay, so I've got Street Fighter again. Oh my gosh. Okay, hopefully this works. So if all else fails, use an adapter from my modern reputable brand instead of some old uh, PS2 to USB adapter that you got that came out probably like 20 years ago. And again, the whole reason that I'm trying this arcade stick out on Street Fighter is because it didn't seem like I could do quarter circles that easily when I was playing Guilty Gear. But hopefully that's just me getting used to the stick. And as always, I'm playing it at a weird angle. So far so good, everything feels nice. Again, it is a small form factor, so it does feel a little bit like a toy when you're playing with your hands so close. It's like, why are they like this? But you know, there are modern controllers like the Ethnic Fight Pad and the VS Fighter or Versus Fighter that basically keyboard controls that are where your hands are so close together. And this is kind of that, but with a joystick. So that's pretty good. I'm probably gonna whiff this, but let's see. Oh, nice, got it. <laughs> Perfect, I don't know. Feels good to me. I guess I could kind of hold it like this too and kind of play like that if I really wanted to. I find myself actually moving my fingers way too much. You might've seen that there. Um, I thought the button would be higher up, but instead it was just right there. So, you know, that does take getting used to given how close these buttons are. Actually, while I remember, let's just do a quick size comparison here. So it is only a little bit wider than a Xbox One controller. I don't know if that kind of makes sense in perspective, just like that. And also kind of in this dimension, it's also just a little bit taller. For another point of reference, here is a Joy-Con. And here are two Joy-Cons. So that kind of shows you what we're working with. All right, you don't need to see me play as Akuma again for the millionth time. So I guess it is now time to tear this apart or at least to open it up and see what's inside. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my patented two dumbbell set up to protect the ball top and the joystick, I guess. So let's see what's inside. All right, the screws are all out, so let's see what's inside. And there we are. On the left, we have the PCB with a nice old school Hori logo. All the buttons you can see are soldered in. And on the right, we have the joystick. Again, I think this is a Hori original, not using any kind of arcade name brand parts. Little breakout board here for the start and select button and the PS1 slash two cable. Yeah, in terms of modding capability, I don't really know what you'd be doing. I guess like with the Hori EX2 stick that I would have released a video of before this, I can remove this joystick, but I'd have to snip the wires and the wires are soldered directly onto the switch terminals, which is always a fun time and basically means that you can't do anything to this without some proper planning ahead. But to be honest, I am interested in modding this stick because it's pretty interesting. I do have a desoldering gun coming, so hopefully it'll make desoldering these things a bit easier. It's just a cheap one from AliExpress. What do you say? Let's leave this one disassembled as well. These are all bases for future mod projects, so I think we'd be brave and take these off, or at least remove the joystick. Let's do that. Okay, so I've unscrewed the joystick from the mounting plate, but I will need to remove the ball top. The ball top is now loose. And you can see that this is a nice kind of translucent blue dust washer too, which is kind of cool. I should actually be able to disassemble this all now, unless there's some sort of clip that is holding. Actually, that's probably true. There are probably clips holding this PCB or holding the buttons into the board. And then those are soldered into the PCB. So just like the uh, Hori EX stick for the Xbox 360, I might have to just snip these wires. It's going to be pretty hard to uh, snip them at the PCB. So I might just snip them off at the terminals. And honestly, while I should be kind of noting what wires or what orientation went to what direction, I guess it really doesn't matter if I'm gonna do a board replacement or if I'm just gonna, you know, I can look back on this video, I guess, and reverse engineer it. Okay, so there is no going back now. I have officially snipped the wires off this joystick, but I might just leave the cable intact for the time being, just so I can solder the buttons off first and then I'll be able to have a look at how this was wired in case I ever want to use this for PlayStation ever again. So time to do up the case again. And then just so I don't lose everything, I'll screw this back and keep all the joystick assembly as together as I can. 
Okay, so I've reassembled the joystick outside of the arcade stick and secured the screws here just as much as I could so I don't lose them. And just for reference, here is the joystick I pulled out of the Hori EX2 for the Xbox 360. And this was the one where I cut it off from the PCB end as opposed to the uh, switch end. So that's why there's wires coming off. Although I don't, looking back on it now, it does look a bit funny. This looks much cleaner if you were to keep these together. But as you can see, they're basically the same design. I don't know if this is a common way to design arcade joysticks or if this is just Hori's way to do it, but there we are. You've got your top mounting plates, which I guess sandwich and hold the switches. Then you've got your bottom plate that actually screws into the whole case itself. Same with this one. And yeah, I'm not really too sure what I'll do with these. I mean, they're nice and you know, they've got switches on them, so that's fun. But whether or not these mounting holes kind of line up with any other standard arcade stick mounts, I'll just have to find out myself. Anyways, so here we are again, another arcade stick reviewed and another one disassembled for future modding. Hope this was useful to anyone. And if you're interested, please stay tuned for the upcoming mod video. Who knows when that will be, but I do plan on modding this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have cut this out permanently. So that'll do it for now. Thanks so much for watching. There's a lot more to see in my channel, so I hope you stick around. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks.